just got him. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, oh, look at that beautiful piece of meat. Now the moment of truth. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Addicted Life. Today, we're in one of my favorite places, doing one of my favorite things, fishing with friends. We got my good buddy Dwayne Larson over here. We got Sean in the background, and we're out here trying to catch some spring chinook and some summer steelhead. Going for the bucket list today, trying to catch them both in the same day. If you guys are new to this channel, this is Addicted Fishing. If you've never seen us before, we educate, entertain, and inspire anglers like you to go out and have more fun on the river. And also, if we end up catching some fish, we're going to take it home and cook it for you. So, have fun today, guys. Stay with us. We're going to have a lot of fun. So, going over what I got here today, guys, the setup I'm using, it's a little unconventional as far as the reel goes. I got my SST 15 to 50 pound meat stick here. It's a salmon herring rod, it's about 10 and a half foot. But really, I mean, it's such a smooth casting reel. You don't need the line counter in this situation, but that's such a smooth casting reel that I just use it anyways. I was plunking with this rod earlier in the week, so I just left it on there. It works just fine, it's got a good line pickup, but I got 50 pound braid all the way down to my three ounce bobber. Got a little cheater up here above so I can make sure that that's going down every time. Got my three ounce lead straight to my swivel. And I'm sticking really short with my leader length here. I like to have a short leader, mainly because you want that bait, you know, when you use a big bait like this, it's gonna be floating a lot. So you wanna keep that bait close to your lead and that lead doesn't usually scare them at all. So got about a two foot leader here, down to my three aught mustad, big old freaking meat hook, tied a little bait loop on there. And the bait I'm using, I just got some cured up row here. This is actually, this is actually a little bit hotter egg. This is some of the red hot double stuff cure. I was fishing here yesterday and we were having a hard time getting these fish to bite. So I went with a little hotter cure today to see if that changed the game. And what I have on the end here, you see me adding that little meat, that little meat globlet there. That's actually some smelt that we dipped earlier this spring. And so you can use all kinds of cool stuff like that. You can use smelt, you can use herring, you can use anchovies, you can use uh, any kind of sardines, anything that kind of gets that extra scent on there, kind of gets those fish fired up. And I'm just systematically fishing here, working the spinner through, working the bait through, and then we're gonna keep moving, try to try to get as much water covered today as we possibly can. That was a bite. Must have been a small. Oh! With the way they were biting yesterday, it wouldn't surprise me that those might be Chinook. Oh, he's got hit again. I can actually feel it in my line, that thump, thump. I'm gonna go one more bait a little deeper and then we need to go. right let him grab it let him turn on it let him run oh I got goosebumps it's been a hard day of fishing so far addicts we've been fishing our butts off we're seeing some fish roll there's fish around seems like the Chinook are getting really really tough to catch they're really finicky today for some reason but that was a really nice summer steelhead on the end of the line there maybe there'll be another one Guys, I'm fishing this really fast water, and summer steelhead in particular, all steelhead like this kind of fast water. But really what we're looking at here is these big choppy boulders, just a little bit of broken surface underneath this fast current, and these fish will just nose right up to these boulders. So I'm using this number five blue fox. I'm trying to get down as fast as I can, but I'm fishing really short pieces of water. I'm trying to identify where those fish are gonna be, 
you use that spinner to get right through that like 10 to 15 foot zone of where those fish are gonna be sitting and fish just that little section and then I'm pulling it up out of the water to the surface and bringing it back to me. So again, very, very pinpoint accuracy here. You wanna hit just the other side of those rocks, get that blade going, engage it, swing it through that short section where that fish can sit and then bring it back out. Here it goes, everybody. Here it goes, Sean, get ready, dude. It's gonna happen here. I can smell it. Oh my God, I just had one. Get ready. Get ready, he's gonna come get it again. I watched him move right for it. He came right over and smacked it. And I saw him go right back where he was. Okay, get ready, here we go. Got him, got him, got him, no! No! Oh! That was such a big Chinook. Oh! Well, couple fish lost. It's about 10.30 in the morning still. The day is still young. We're gonna keep at it hard for you guys. We're gonna say goodbye to this giant Chinook that I just lost as we float by here. But better to lost than never had, I guess. Just got done filming a tutorial. I'm sitting here working the last of my little bait, not paying attention at all. It's actually just freaking Snapchatting. I look over and my popper is just gone. And look what we have. Oh, a big old Springer. Oh, baby. On the meat stick. On the meat stick. Oh, baby. Oh, this is awesome. It has been such a long day, addicts lost some really nice fish. I've been throwing a fit. Finally ate a little snack. Thank God Dwayne brought some, and I lost him. Rolled right off the hook. Well, heartbreak city there. That was on the same setup we've been fishing all day though. Actually, I'd switched to a coon shrimp here. I did a little coony, coony egg combo here with the three ounce bobber. Found a nice piece of Chinook water here. It obviously seems to be a a few more Chinook than Steelhead today, roaming around. But I guess all we can do is keep trying, right? God, I don't know what's with my luck lately, guys and gals, but my world is just upside down. That's what I'm doing here, you guys. Fishing this deep Chinook hole that we just lost the fish in. I want to throw some spinners here before we leave, so I'm switching to some extra heavies. I just put an extra heavy R&B, just a blue, good old faithful on his. And the one I'm going to here is the Northwest Extreme bullet body here. It's literally made with a nine mil bullet, so it's about a half ounce spinner, maybe even a little heavier than that. So going super heavy, gonna get down and deep, make these things run through there really quick before we take off and get down river. It's getting kind of late in the day. We got live feed tonight. And the way I like to present these in these big deep holes like this is a, a, kind of a downriver presentation. That way my spinner is actually sinking the whole time that I'm fishing it through the strike zone. So I'm gonna go up river, let it sink down for a good three, four count. Normally I would preach not to let your spinner sink. I'm gonna wait till I feel that thud there. Then I'm just gonna do a nice steady reel you're really just going off of an aggressive nature of the fish here. Trying to get that thing down and deep, down in his face, and just kind of reel it across the pool. It doesn't need to necessarily be bouncing on bottom. or be super close to the bottom, but it just needs to be down there and in the strike zone so that those fish can see it in a big, you know, 12, 15 foot hole like this. There he is, got him. 
Yes. On that downriver presentation, guys, that's a big one. Oh, that's a nice one. Of course, this one looks wild because it's nice and chrome. On that downriver press, keep your head in the water, you little bastard. Oh, we want this one on the bank so bad, guys. So bad. Oh, my goodness. I don't know. That's a keeper, everyone. That's a keeper. That's a keeper. Yes, sir, -y Bob. Little man, what did we do there? Look out. Oh, we did it, everybody. One for seven. At least we weren't over. Oh, man, that thing was about to come off, too. Look at that. By the hair of his chin. Look at that. Oh, it just fell right out. Oh my god, I was I was gonna say it. I was gonna say it when I first hooked it. If I lost it, I was gonna break my rod, but then I figured out I lost it for sure. Oh thank the creator for that one, you guys. Just a bronzy, beautiful little spring chinook. Now we got something to cook for you guys tonight. So stay tuned for that. We're gonna take this bad boy home. Put it in the oven, maybe on the grill. We don't know yet. What do you think, Little? How should we cook it? How do you think we should cook it, Tiny? <laughs> he says, I want sushi. Nope, get out of there. One of the things I like to do is kind of palpate that heart there. Give it a little, little thrust like that. Keeps that blood coming out. Keeps that heart pumping a little bit. Just so it gets the rest of that blood out of its meat. Give it the old shake, shake. Thanks for sticking with us here today, you guys. Drop a comment below with what you think of today's episode. I know this is one of my favorite times of year. Get out here, nice weather. Have a great year for it this year, cool season. But it's so great to see some fish showing up. Dead Springer. Okay guys, our day's winding down. It's getting a little late, my belly's grumbling. Thank you so much for tuning in up till this point, but you guys don't want to leave us yet. You're gonna love what's coming next. So, made it home, grab the Gerber knife and the old flyaway fish mat. Let's get this thing ready for the dinner table. Got the belly here, Let's guts out of here, just like so. The beauty of these Gerber knives too, is these, the sheath that it comes in has that sharpener on it. It's so, so, so important to have a nice sharp knife when handling and cooking or trying to cut up these beautiful spring chinook like this. You really want to try to savor as much of this meat as possible. Voila, look at that beautiful piece of meat. There you have it everybody. Two beautiful fillets ready for the dinner table. Now follow us inside and we'll get these things seasoned up and ready for the oven. All right, everybody, now we're back in the kitchen. Welcome to another edition of Kinnegy's Kitchen here. What we're gonna do today is I'm gonna show you one of my very favorite recipes that I like to do for really any style of fish. A lot of times I don't like to go too crazy on my recipe or my seasonings when I'm making these springers because it's got such a good flavor and it's so fatty anyways. But today we're doing a pesto mayo madness. And it's one of my very favorite. It goes great with pasta or rice or, or anything you wanna pair it with or just by itself. And here it goes, this is how we do it. So first and foremost, I'm gonna take a little Johnny seasoning. And you don't wanna go too heavily on any kind of seasoning when you're making these springers. Again, because you don't wanna take away from too much of that flavor. You can add more later. I'm gonna go just a nice little sprinkling with some Johnny's here. Then, I love garlic on just about anything. So I'm gonna go with some minced garlic here, some dried minced garlic. Just kinda cover that. And this is kind of all, I, I use this, this seasoning basically, or this base seasoning for almost any recipe, whether I'm just gonna put some butter on there, or whether I'm gonna add some sort of barbecue or a jelly or some sort of, a, well, you guys are gonna have to stay tuned. I can't give away too many secrets because there's gonna be a lot more of these Kinnegy kitchens to come. So then my next little step here is a little garlic, herb, and pepper seasoning. This stuff's pretty basic. There's no salt in it at all, but just a little oregano little basil, a little more garlic because you can never have too much garlic in my opinion. Now I'm gonna take some of this 
uh, Reverend Randall's beef rub. Really, this is kind of like a Montreal without all the salt. It's a nice, nice smoky flavor to it. And then go just another light little coating of that on there. Just enough to get the taste buds going. And so that's my basic seasoning. That's my base seasoning that I'm gonna have here. Garlic, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, a couple of different herbs. And now the important part. And this you don't wanna go too crazy on. What I have here is just normal mayonnaise. I'm gonna use just a little bit. So I'm gonna take my, my butter knife here. I'm just gonna dollop a couple little drops of this on there. Just like so, just like so. And what I'm gonna do now, now that I got some of that mayo on there, is I'm just gonna take this butter knife and I'm just gonna evenly lather this stuff out. And again, I want just a real thin film. Because again, uh, mayo's, it, mayo is very, very fatty and you don't wanna put too much on there or else it's gonna just make a big greasy mess and it's gonna start taking away from the flavor of that fish. That's about perfect. Just again, a nice little glaze. Same thing on this side. And if you have too much, again, go ahead and scrape it off, throw it in the sink or in the garbage, get rid of it, because you don't want to go too crazy on that mayo with this, because I want to taste more of that fish than anything. Okay, now, now the fun part. One of my favorite, favorite flavors is pesto. Just your good old fashioned, classico, traditional basil pesto here. And now this you want to go very tentative with. But what I'm going to do now, is the same kind of thing I did with the mayo, just a nice little dollop. Again, I'd rather put more on later than put too much on now. So I'm gonna go like that. Another little dollop there. I'm gonna evenly just kind of spread that out in that mayo. Same thing for the tailpiece here. That's a little much. Spread that around. My taste buds are tingling. And so now right behind me, I got my oven set at about 385 to 400 degrees. I like to cook this fish kind of hot and fast. And mainly for the reason being, because I want to let that, I want that stuff to be good and juicy in there. I want to not overcook this salmon. Chinook salmon is kind of hard to overcook because it is so fatty. But I'm going to put it in there for about 20 to 25 minutes, and then we're going to get to eating here. All right, everybody. Now the moment of truth. Oh, there it is. There you have it. That is just cooked to perfection. I'm going to show you guys what done fish looks like here. I'm going to grab a fork for you. And what you'll see here is when the fish is done right, a lot of times if it's undercooked, you'll stick a fork in it here and you'll turn it to the side and it'll be mushy and you'll see a lot of moisture in between the flakes there. But you can see here, it's just perfect in that thick piece. You pull it apart. Oh man, I'm drooling. I'm literally drooling. Okay, let's go for it. Let's see how she turned out. Oh my God. Melt in your mouth perfection. If you guys want to try more recipes like this, be sure to keep tuning into these Addicted Lives. We're going to start trying to do as many catch and cooks as we can because I know you guys like to eat good fish and I know I sure do. So thank you so much for tuning in today, you guys. Be sure if you haven't already, give us a thumbs up on this video. Drop a comment below with what you thought of today's episode and whether or not you had any fun watching us today. Be sure to share this out there. Turn that bell notification on. You guys stay tuned for more of these awesome videos coming out. We appreciate you sticking around. You guys stay fishy and we'll see you out there. All right, everyone out there, thank you so much for watching this video. We really appreciate it. If you guys wanna watch more of our content, click this video right here. And if you're brand new to the channel, do not forget, tap that subscribe button, turn on that bell notification. And to all of our subscribers out there, we appreciate every single one of you. If you guys wanna be on comment of the day, just make sure you guys are dropping comments, interacting on the videos. Here's today's comment of the day. Thanks again for watching. Hit that thumbs up. We'll see you on the river.